Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 16, we're going to look at the Day of Atonement, called Yom Kippur. Yom means day, Kippur means hiding. Yom Kippur. And the Lord spake unto Moses, After the death of the two sons of Aaron, that runs all the way back to Leviticus 10, verses 1 and 2, Nabab and Abihu. And they offered before the Lord and died, and they offered that strange fire. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the altar, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Now this is not to do with his sons, the death. There's only one time in the year that that high priest, Aaron, and those that will take his place, was to go into that most holy place where the mercy seat is, where the cherubim are. No other time. And what we're going to do is we're going to set forth now what happens on the Day of Atonement, that one time in a year. This is what this chapter is going to speak about. This is where God meets Israel. And there's only one person that can go in there. And there are rules and regulations and a law. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat. He shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. He shall be girded with a linen girdle and with a linen mitre shall he be attired. So there is special clothing. There's that special priestly clothing. You don't walk in there with blue jeans. You don't walk in there with what you. Now you see when, when there are churches out there. Oh, you're going to have a tie. You're going to have a, a suit and all that. I'm trying to put you back under the law. There's nowhere in the Bible says that you got to wear a suit and tie. But here we are. There is a precise matter of clothing. And the clothing speaks of a high priest. I guess you're trying to make yourself a priest. And at this time right now is that one time a year that he is to go into the most holy place. Which today, that is not even nowhere. It's gone. And as of approximately 33 AD, that veil that he's to go through has been ripped. And we have access to God through the mercy seat above the law. The throne of God through the finished work of Jesus Christ by the death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures of Jesus Christ. We're all naked before God. We're all sinners before God. You can't dress yourself up in a monkey suit and fool God. There are plenty of men who in the worldwide will get up behind a pulpit and their dress is fine as anything but their heart is wicked and dark and, and grease as much as anybody who's lost. But you don't dare, under the law, step in this place not wearing what God has told you to wear. Holy garments, therefore, shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. He's to take a bath before he puts them on. He's to be clean. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel, the people, two kids of the goats, for a sin offering and one ram 
for a burnt offering. We discussed those already in the previous chapter of Leviticus. And Aaron shall offer his bullock for a sin offering. Aaron, the high priest, is allowed to go into the most holy place of all the world, the, the tabernacle then soon to be the temple. He's allowed to go in there one day a year, but he's going to go in there twice. He's going to step into that most holy place and he's going to offer his sin offering. Because he's a sinner. And when he comes out, he's going to go back in and he's going to offer the sin of the congregation. The sin offering. Well, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God, the Lamb of God, when he offered that sin offering, that veil went right down the middle. And he went in there, Hebrew says, he went in there once and once for all, one offering has paid our sin debt. Which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house, wife and children. And he shall take two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Everybody's witnessing. And Aaron shall cast lots. Roll the dice, straws, however they did it. Three white rocks, one black rock. Upon the two goats. Okay, so here's two goats. Somehow we're gonna make a we're gonna make a lot here, and God's gonna choose which goat. Even number, it's the goat on the left. Right number, it's the goat on the right, and God says, Okay, that's the one I want. However, they shot the lots. One lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. Two goats, one's going to go to God, and one's going to be a scapegoat. And that's where you get your expression, scapegoat. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm just a scapegoat. I wonder what they know what they're saying when they say that. Because I'm a scapegoat. And the one that went for the Lord is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin in the world. It's funny how it says ram, because when, when Abraham said God will provide himself, a lamb for a sacrifice to Isaac, which is a type of Christ. There was a ram in the thickets that died that day while Isaac came home. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell. Okay? However they did, that one goat, okay, that's God's goat. And offer him for a sin offering. He's going to die. He's going to shed his blood. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord. Here you go, Lord. Here's the goat. You said it's the scapegoat. To make an atonement for him, Aaron, and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, his wife and his children. And shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Got it? It's for him. Jesus Christ did not have to offer anything for himself. He offered it for us. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire. From off the altar before the Lord. That's the brazen altar. And his hands full of sweet incense. Beaten. Isaiah 53. When Jesus Christ is going to be offered for sin before God. He is a brutal mess by a cat of nine tails. He has been punched. He has been beaten. He has had the thorns placed upon his head by whipping. He's beat in Isaiah 53. So this part here, the incense that is sweet, well flavored of God, Isaiah 53, becomes a type of Jesus Christ. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. And bring it within the veil. That veil was rent. This is the veil that separates the holy from the most holy. Rent by Jesus Christ. So here's that time, the first time he gets to go in that room. Now I want you 34 verses. 
And as we read this, I want you to mark with your pen or your highlighter, whatever you do, when you see the word rope, R-O-P-E. When you see that market with neon, so it stands out, okay? And he, Aaron, shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord. That's the incense altar. That's the golden altar. Probably where his sons were. Where John the Baptist's father, which I can never remain, remember his name, is where he is. Zacharias, when Gabriel speaks to him. Realize, approximately, I'm going to say, 1,500 years later, Zacharias is going to be standing where this high priest is standing. And an angel is going to meet with him and say, you're going to have a son. He's going to be the forerunner of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist. So you see what we're doing here is pointing to Jesus Christ. We've got Aaron the high priest, which would be a type, the forerunner of the sins of Israel. Because what comes next is for the sins of the people. That's Jesus Christ. And Jesus said about John the Baptist, of all the men that are born of a woman, there has been no one like John the Baptist. So as far as this thing here, and then Jesus Christ dying, when God looks upon Aaron with that golden calf, once Jesus dies on that cross, I don't see no golden calf. I don't know how many times he goes in the Day of Atonement. But it ain't paid for until Jesus dies. But now that Jesus died, the sins of the high priest, if they did what they're supposed to do. And he shall take of the blood. So you got to have blood. Did he go in there with baptism water? Did he go in there with church membership? Did he go in there with his works? Did he go in there with Mary? Did he go in there killing people? Absolutely not. He went in there with blood. Salvation is a bloody means to get to God. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. He shall take the blood of the bullock. And sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward so he walks in this room and it's dark there's no light in there he faces east kind of weird faces east you walked in this place east to west so it would be have to be a place that as he walks in and we don't know if he's in dark we don't know if he's in the light of God but at that mercy seat, he takes that blood with his fingers seven times. Shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times? Seven's complete. Seven's complete. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering. That is for the people. So what is the symbol of an animal when people worship Satan? The goat of Mendes? The goat head? And yet when it comes to the people of Israel, it's a goat. That's a sin offering at the Day of Atonement. It's wonderful how Satan takes that which is good in the Bible and transforms it for wicked for himself. This is for the people. And bring his blood, the goat, Within the veil. So he, he, come, he goes in with a bullock blood for him. Seven times. Turns around and gets out. Steps out and offers the goat. He takes the blood. He brings it back in. Within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. This is the second trip. And sprinkled upon the mercy seat before the mercy seat. So he makes two trips in there. And I guarantee there will be no one in that room when he steps in that room. I haven't found the word rope yet. I don't know. Maybe we'll find it. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Wow, they, they defiled the temple. They defiled the tabernacle with their sins. And because of their transgressions. 
in all their sins, you find this in Isaiah 53, shall he, Aaron, do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. The whole nation is filthy. We're all sinners. All have come short of the glory of God. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Now ready? There shall be no man in the tabernacle of congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place. So, I haven't found the word rope. And no one's to be in the holy place, and no one's to be in the tabernacle. You say, why do you keep saying rope? Because there's a tradition of people to say that they would tie a rope to the high priest's foot, and they would put bells on him, and the bells stopped jingling. They knew that God did not receive the offering, and he burned them dead right there in the spot. So they would use the rope to pull him out. Really? I haven't found the word rope. There was no rope tied to a, 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 a Naab in the bayou. I think if he would have violated what God told him, there'd be nothing left. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy man. You better watch out for traditions of man. There's enough traditions in the Bible to follow. Until he come out and has made atonement for himself one trip and for his household one trip and for all the congregation of Israel the second trip and the only trip of that year. Now notice himself, his family, and Israel. Three. He shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it. And shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. There are four horns. He shall sprinkle the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of it. The sins of the nation is defiled that temple and the tabernacle. Now we don't have to do that today. Today, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. A lamb without spot. Paragraph. And when he has made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat. And confess over him all the iniquities, Isaiah 53, and the children of Israel and all their transgressions, Isaiah 53, and all their sins, Isaiah 53. Let's look at Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And verse number 2. For he, Jesus, shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, he has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. We hid as it our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs. And carried our sorrow, yet we dis esteem him stricken, smitten of God, beaten, and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. There is a sacrifice of that Lamb of God, the Messiah. Right here in verse 21. The iniquities, the transgressions, the sins are upon Jesus Christ. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't finish. Uh, put in verse 21. Putting them upon the head of the goat. So they got the head of this goat and they're saying, man, we are sinners. 
We are unholy. We are unrighteous. You have to go to a goat today. I want the Satanists do that with their goat. We go to the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Shall send him away by a hand of a fit man. So no other man can just grab that goat and let him loose. That fit man would be type of Jesus Christ. I mean, that'd be type of John the Baptist that is the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Into the wilderness. That's where John came from. John is specifically says came out of the wilderness. And he's baptizing in the wilderness. And he's preaching in the wilderness. And Jesus Christ came into him from the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities of all the iniquities unto a land not inhabited. Jesus died on a skull. No one was living there. It was a place of execution. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Satan take his Jesus off into the wilderness. Forty days and forty nights. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation. And shall put off the linen garments. Which he put on when he went into the holy place. And shall leave them there. He walks in the holy place and he disrobes. Changes his clothes. And leaves them there. He shall wash his flesh with water again in the holy place. And put on his garments. So he's taking another bath and he's putting on his regular garments. And come forth and offer his burnt offering. And the burnt offering of the people. So there are two more burnt offerings. So you have Christ. In Aaron, as Aaron is coming out of the water, the resurrection, dying, death, here's the water. Now he's changed. He's a new creature. He's a new person. He's got new garments. Off with the old and on with the new. Offering the people and making atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall be burned upon the altar. No one can have that fat but God. He shall let go the goat for a scapegoat. Shall he he that let go the scapegoat he that let go the goat for a scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in the water and afterwards come into the camp. So that one that set the goat free is got is got to bathe. The job is complete. The sins are gone, at least for another year. Not for us. Once our sins are gone, they're gone. They're never to be forgotten. And God will never remember it again. Aren't you glad you're under your grace? This is a law. You're going to come back and do this next year again. And the bullock for a sin offering and the goat for a sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement for the holy place, Shall one carry forth without the camp. There's Jesus Christ. He didn't die in Jerusalem. He died outside of Jerusalem. And they shall burn in the fire. Christ went to hell. Their skins and their flesh and their dung. He that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water. Afterwards he shall come into the camp. Jesus came into camp, went into the upper room, right through the door. Peace be unto you, it's me. He came into the camp, spoke to Mary, says, don't touch me yet, I'm not sent to my father. He met with two men walking down the road to Emmaus. So you see Christ all through this, in many different characters that show up on this. And you see John the Baptist as a fit man. And this shall be the statute forever. So this is never going to end. Down to you. It's end right now. It's stopped. It's paused. It's coming back in the tribulation period. It's coming back in the millennium. But when they do it in the millennium, there's going to be the Lamb of God sitting on David's throne. And the Prince, David, walking around. That in the seventh month, 
On the 10th day of the month, don't go by a Roman calendar, that's wrong. On the 10th day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourns among a Gentile. A Gentile. The Gentiles are in this. Do you hear what I said? The Gentiles in this. Don't you do no work for salvation. It's already been done by the blood. Whether you're a Jew or a Greek or Italian, whatever you are, Cornelius, whatever you are, you Ethiopian eunuch, don't you do no work. It's rested upon the Day of Atonement. It's rested upon the day that Christ died on that cross. It all, uh, can I be baptized right now? Philip says, no, you can't. you got to believe in Jesus Christ. I believe Jesus Christ is the Lord. Okay, now I'll baptize you. Cornelius, you're going to worship that angel? No, I'm going to send for Peter, and Peter's going to tell me the gospel. Then I'll believe. Don't you do no work when it comes to the atonement. It's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. Shall do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you, our high priest, Jesus Christ, to be cleanse you, to cleanse you. He cleansed me from all sins, that ye may be clean. I am clean by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when I do sin as a Christian, I, I confess my sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. From all your sins, if that's not John 1, 9, what is? If that's not John chapter 1, verse 9, before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you. And you shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. And the priest whom ye shall anoint, the high priest, and whom ye shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office, in his father's stead, so here's a high priest. He's too old. He's going to die. You take him and you put his son in the office. Aaron's son. And the son of that high priest. You're going now going to put him in that office. This is what you're going to do. And you know what happened when the high priest died? Anybody who was in the city of refuge for killing somebody unaware. They didn't do it purposely as by accident. They were set free to go home. Boy, I've done a lot of sins I didn't know I, I did. I've done a lot of wrong that I, I, listen, I'm still a sinner. I admit that they were sinners. The day I came to Jesus Christ, all right, you get out of that city of refuge and go home. And what did Jesus tell those that when he said go home? Go home and tell them what God has done for you. Tell them what I've done for you. Shall I make an atonement and he shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. That's the high priest that takes over. And he shall make an atonement for for the holy sanctuary, the new priest, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar. He shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. See the priest? That was his house over here in, in verses 6, 7, 8, 9. His wife and his sons and the priests. And for all the people of the congregation, this shall be an everlasting statute unto you. What we're reading is going to happen forever into ever. But with the Lamb of God standing before them and sitting before them on the throne. So that's going to remind them what Jesus Christ. You know, when we have the Lord's Supper, we're to remember Christ shedding his blood, Christ's body being broken for us, and that he's coming again. We're to be remembered of that, what Christ has done for us. And when we see the Day of Atonement and all these feast days that we're going to learn about, when it's going to happen forever and ever, we're going to be always reminded of the cross and Calvary. That's never going to be forgotten. Because that's why we're there. That's why we're saved. We're not going to how many church members you had, how many you baptized, how many balls you, you, you hit out. Now, it ain't going to be nothing like that. It's all going to be about the cross. It's going to be about the tomb. It's going to be about the, the, the resurrection, the gospel. That's what it's all about. Preach the gospel, the Bible says. And ye shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. 
And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So Aaron fulfilled what we just read. That day, the seventh day, on the tenth day, Aaron went and did everything, and God was pleased. We're going to start looking at the feast. 